Well podcast, where we have open and honest discussions about ourselves. <clears throat> this is a place where we break down, break away, and break through codependency, allowing ourselves to life. We are tired of being sick and tired. We are tired, but we are not giving up. We know that there is something magnificent inside of us. And because we are fighting daily, hourly, and by the minute, fighting ourselves, our kids, our spouses, we have to do things differently. <clears throat> we have to break the cycle. We don't have a million chances. We have to be happy now. We have to find a way. So how do we do that? How is that possible? If you look around at what society is telling you, they tell you that what we're doing is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. And it's happening through the practice and the love that we call awakening the magnificent soul. We are all magnificent souls, and these are our stories of healing. Today in episode 41, I am back on track after uh, last week's episode about the coronavirus on the last leg of the control series, and that's part six of 10, all focused on control. And specifically today, trying to control outcomes in relationships, how that looks, and how taking on a burden, maybe yours or someone else, can do more harm than good. But before we get into this discussion, don't forget to let me know your thoughts about this episode. Any feedback you have or anything you'd like me to cover on future podcasts at epiphanyvault.com. Remember, you can share anonymously. It is a safe place, and I would welcome the discussion. Also, I wanted to make a really cool announcement that I'm excited about. If you follow me on any of the social webs, you probably have seen that I'm offering a new soul class that I'm doing for free. I'm putting some finishing touches on it, and it's going to be called How to Break Down, Break Away, and Through Any Bad Relationship Without Feeling Helpless, Afraid, or Being Alone Forever. And I want to make sure I don't leave anything out. So I'm asking you, the listener, if you would let me know your biggest question that you have about codependency. It could be anything. You may think it's silly, but I assure you it is not. And to get the class free, all you have to do is submit your question. And in exchange for your advice, I will give you, again, free access to the soul class that's happening on Tuesday, April 28th. I think I will be selling the course for $297 soon, but uh, you'll get special access to experience the course for free when you let me know your number one question. And to submit your question, just go to the website and click on free live soul class. It's the bottom left-hand corner. And I am closing this off when the spaces are full. So if this is something that you'd like to do, I would really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you there. So I wanted to uh, go over a listener question that I got through Ep the Epiphany Vault. And I want to thank Marv for writing in. Um, Marv gave me permission to share his thoughts with you, you all here. So this is what he writes. He says, Happy Friday. So I listened to the first podcast of What is Codependency? And before listening to this podcast, I thought that codependency could only be one person in a relationship meaning one person would be codependent and the other person isn't. It sounds like some relationships can have two codependent personalities. Really eye-opening stuff. Question, is it possible for two codependent people to have a healthy, intimate relationship? If so, how? Can a codependent person have a good relationship without seeking therapy? Do you have any success stories or any advice of how a codependent person was able to overcome and move into healthy friendships and relationship. Thanks for sharing your story, Marv. Or he's, he actually says, thank you for, for sharing your story, truly brave, which thank you. That's a great comp compliment. And thank you for the encouragement, Marv. It definitely fuels my fire when it comes to the podcast and the other things that I'm doing. Um, as far as to continuing to, to share, and I really hope that sharing my hurts and difficulties and triumphs encourages my listeners. Um, and yeah, thanks again, Mar, for listening to episode one. And just a brief little asterisk about episode one. That is 
the by far the most played episode so far in my catalog on the podcast. And I think it's cool because I think you're exactly right. There are a lot of misinterpretations and even bad connotations surrounding the word codependency. And even in that episode, I put it out into the universe the way that I define codepend codependency, which is a complete disconnect from oneself. I still stand very strongly with that definition and that the manifestation of this disconnect is a codependent connection with someone or even sometimes something like drugs, alcohol or food, for example. But without arguing the semantics, like the words and the definitions, they're really just signposts and symbols for what these life occurrences are. And what I think is important to focus on and what I've done in my journey is to learn how to deal with this disconnect and its consequences, which is why I'm here. And Marv, thank you. Some really deep follow-up questions uh, for me. And to that, as I always do, I have to preface my responses and note that these are my personal opinions and they're only based off of my experience. I always recommend seeking professional help should you think your situation could benefit. And I love this question, Marv, about is it possible for two codependent people to have a healthy, intimate relationship? And if I'm completely honest, I don't know. But I do think, I think so. Uh, looking at myself, I consider my relationship with myself to be the healthiest it ever has been. I'm able to be aware and intentional and have the wherewithal to set boundaries should the situation arrive. And these things are that in the past I was flat out not able to do. I think two codependent people who are in the right space and who have the tools and support to work on themselves and each other have a great shot at having a healthy relationship. But I have to continuously stress and remind myself that a whole healthy me is the best me and I do 100% believe that that's the first step and regarding therapy I am a big proponent of therapy I think that with the right professional it is always great to have a safe space to discuss feelings and worries and everyday occurrences so if the situation allows I go to my individual individual therapist and a group or couples therapy as well and the last bit I consider myself you know, not to brag, but I do cons consider myself a huge success story. And that's one reason why I'm sharing my story here on the podcast and working on my book and my courses. And for the most part, part I have recovered through self-study and self-awareness, ups and downs, trials and tribulations. And since my awakening, I still struggle with deep bouts of depression and codependent triggers and leanings. But I have learned a self-awareness of love for myself and I have armed myself with tools to combat these things when I would have been lost in the abyss in a previous life. And I'm not sure if I can come up with a single piece of advice regarding recovery, but I can tell you that the first step for me was deciding that I had a choice in my life and my relationships, that the only person, thing, event, Etc. that would make me feel better was something that I was going to do. And I came to this conclusion, if you know my story, after a very scary brush with suicide. And I think cognitively, of course, you know that you have a choice. But for me, legitimately, I knew that it was life or death. So I chose me. So those are the ends of your questions, Marv. Thanks again for writing in and thanks for listening. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And we're going to go on to today's topic now. It's a little bit of a spinoff of the relation or responsibility absorption podcast, but I wanted to touch today on taking on the burdens of others, even when it may not be help helpful for ourselves. And this is may, this is maybe may or may not be about control. But why would you want to do this? Why would you want to shoulder burdens that make us feel unhealthy, make you feel like crap, maybe make you feel like we're crazy? Do you find yourself doing things for your other in your codependent relationship that you would not do for yourself? Do you think you're doing this unconsciously or subconsciously? Have you ever reasoned with yourself or someone else that you're quote unquote just trying to be nice? 
if you dig deep, do you feel that people abuse your niceness? Is it hard to say no when asked to do something? Are you too generous with your time? Do you take up more than your share at work on, on or in an organization? Do you always feel too busy, quote unquote, to focus on you? These are some hard questions, and there are a lot of them, but what do you think? These are questions that I have had to ask myself during my personal growth, because honestly, for the longest time, I would wear busyness as a badge of honor. I would just do, just do and do and do without thinking about its effects, or if I wanted to do anything at all, or if I had a choice in doing those things. I've now come to terms with the fact that I don't have to say yes to everything, and I have to tell you, it's a very freeing feeling. I used to say yes, point blank, if I could do it. If I had the time, no matter what it was, it was the nice thing to do. I didn't give any thoughts on how it would make me feel, if my time was well spent doing said thing, or if here's a big one, if I did it, what would I expect in return? Like control. And we're more on that in a few minutes. You know, if you look at the term code, codependency, you will see a theme in the definition stemming around people pleasing, where codependents utilize uh, situations, people, whether by design or just instinctively to try to be the most well liked person. I was a people pleaser, 100%. So much so that I lost my identity. And that's why I define codependency a little bit differently. That's the deeper level codependency, the complete loss of oneself, the complete loss of one's identity. I feel like that's the root. Uh, when you spend your energies trying to please others, it's only natural that you lose yourself. I would literally want to do anything that was asked, asked of me if I could, without thinking about my wants or desires, without thinking about my personal priorities, my personal values without thinking about emotional or spiritual consequences, without thinking deeper about why I was entertaining those things. That just didn't feel quite right. Truth. Sometimes I would feel like I was the only one that had these problems. It seemed like everyone around me knew how to say no, and I just knew how to be happy, or knew how to say no, maybe just knew how to be happy with life and themselves, and I didn't. Looked like everyone had it together. And for a long time, that was me, state of confusion. What was happening, though, were my subconscious motivations were influencing my conscious choices. So really, my subconscious was making my decision for me. So well, what did my subconscious want? I think it was to be loved, to be liked, to be included to fill in the hole of unlove that I felt for myself. And that's where the control element comes in, I think. The control in the sense that whether you know it or not, the choices that you make as a codependent person almost always have an ulterior motive because you can't identify and grasp and develop the love for yourself. You unknowingly utilize other people, other actions, other things, hoping it will do that for you. And we know it doesn't work. We know it's a vicious cycle because that hole of unlove is a black hole. It's hungry hole <laughs> and it never gets completely filled. It never gets filled. If we use other people and things to fill it, point blank, nothing. And sadly, until you realize this, until you stop and become aware of your choices, why you make them, how it makes you feel, you will be stuck in this cycle. I was, and I almost died. The kicker is it takes radical self-love and self-awareness and radical, I mean radical. Radical because likely you are perpetuating the same patterns as your parents. Radical because you've been doing it for years and years and years, in my case, 37 years. Radical because you just feel tired. Radical because you feel sick to your stomach. Radical because you just feel lost and detached, like you're looking down on the shell of a person. But here I am, living proof, here to tell you that you are strong and beautiful and that those sick feelings you feel will get better, but you have to start with yourself. I can't say it enough. Give yourself permission to be radical, to be abnormal. 
what you and I are doing is abnormal. We're fighting for ourselves. That's it for today. Love you all. Magnificent souls. Living and loving.